Okay guys, so it's Max here, and if you haven't noticed before, all of the music in my videos I have made, um, apart from a couple of tracks that I've put in before, but the way I make them is on GarageBand, and I don't use loops or stuff like that, I actually spend my time, and they are actually available for download and listening in the link in the description, so if you go down to the description now, click show detail, show more, sorry, uh, and then the last two links you can download, which would help me a lot. Please do do that. Uh, or you can listen to them on SoundCloud for free. Uh, but I would much appreciate it if you bought one. Though It only costs £5 for the album, 8 tracks. Um, and it would help me a lot. And it would help me get more equipment for this. Like I'm looking to save up for a sound recorder so I can get better audio on these videos. Uh, so much appreciated if you do buy one. But anyway, for an example, you may have heard this in um, a couple of videos. Uh, I did mention I was going to do a video about this in um, when I got the Mac, when I did the video about the Mac. So if you want to check that out, go check the card up in the corner uh, and that, give that some views and some love. And yeah, so if you you may have heard this before. Uh, it's been in a couple of my song, uh, a couple of my videos. So this is the latest track, and it's been in a couple of my videos. I uh, hope you can hear it okay as well. So for me, it's quite easy because uh, um, my dad's a drummer, I'm a drummer. Uh, we're quite a musical family. Um, so I get the beats quite well and yeah basically it's quite simple and what these greens because this orange is the apple loops and then blue is audio and green is midi so audio is when it records it in like through the microphone and that is once it's recorded it can't be changed I mean you can kind of put sounds over it but other than that you can't really do much midi if I show you here if you click this then I can literally move all of these notes around if I want and I can put this over there, put that there and make it sound completely different if I wanted to which I'm not going to and it doesn't matter because I'm going to not save this um, and you can also click this button called quantize so if I've got a couple like way out in the middle of nowhere that are doing nothing then if you click quantize you see it move that one here uh, so yeah it does things like that um, and it makes it sound better and more in time professional so, don't save. Um, here I started a new one, just recently, it's going to be my next track for the next kind of album that I'm going to make, probably in a couple of years time it will be out. Uh, takes a long time to make a few tracks, this is going to be the first one. Uh, but anyway, so I recorded this in the other day, basically what you do is um, when you start up GarageBand and you get a new document, so give you, you've got this selection here and you can click one of these empty project is uh, good for is like midi, uh, midi not midi. Uh, you can choose drummer and then you can choose different drum beats, which I don't really get the point of because uh, there's drum leads and other things. But worth worth checking it out and stuff. Um, and then you can use an audio interface where you connect it from the guitar amp or bass amp or whatever, or straight from the back of the keyboard or whatever you're using, as it says here. And you can use sound straight from there, so you don't get like people talking or bad sound, it comes straight from the bass amp or guitar amp. Um, here is recording in through the computer microphone or whatever microphone you have connected and here is MIDI which is what I always use and then you just click create and it creates one like so. And then you can click all sorts of random sounds that you want. I always start with synth or drums but you can start with what you want really. Uh, it depends what mood I'm in and what I'm kind of got on my mind. So let's go to here. Here I started with the lead synth in this one. So this is what I've come up with so far. It's just a little thing I put in last night. It really doesn't take much. Come up with a couple of things, plonk them in, record them all at once by just clicking the record button here. So if I show you, for example, from here, I click record, and you just skip again. So this is what I've come up with. Turn off cycle, which I forgot to do just then. So I've just got MIDI keyboard down here, and I can press what I want because uh, it's connected into this MIDI interface box. Uh, and 
then it goes into the computer via USB and GarageBand picks that up. So, you know, whatever. That's not anything specific, you can get rid of that. But well, basically, that's the idea, and you can go back to the beginning. And then if you want to add another thing, like a bass line, go in here, click that, create, and then bass, and pick a bass. I always like Liverpool bass, I never pick anything else, because uh, it's got the best quality, so if you've got some bad speakers that don't have many bass, much bass, uh, this is the most audible. Uh, it's not very audible still, but it's the most audible out of, the most, uh, out of them that I've found so far. But you just start... You're, you always want to make it sure that it fits, so like, play it with it. See, I always find it hard to come up with bass lines because I end up just doing exactly the same riff as that's already there. So, yeah, it's worth experimenting. So if I go back to uh, what I had open before, um, by clicking... Um, so, in here, 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 here. Um, so if I open up this one again, then you can see that what I started with, first of all, so I always keep the things at the end, so this is what I added it all in, this is my full riff that I came up with originally for this one. So originally it starts, so if I solo this, um, these two, which are the main riffs, these two here, it's the sound of the main riffs, and then here, So basically what I did at first is I just clicked record, experimented with some sounds, just did that and picked the best that I wanted to, cropped them, make sure they're like four or eight bars, something like that, that will fit in nicely. Um, it's always got to be four, two, four or eight bars, uh, or, or it can be one, so one, two, four or eight, but it doesn't want to be something like five or three, unless it's a little thing that comes in every now and again, but it doesn't really want to be that. So I just recorded a whole bunch and later down so you see this one that I just played is here and then it moves on to this one here so it went from this to this so you can do whatever um, and then I would uh, then I added in this bass line which was basically the same if you listen to this um, if I so go back to soloing this again, and then I go to this, very similar. But it's just got a few less um, notes, and then you put them together, and you get. Let's go back to the beginning. So yeah, that's that bit done. And then I have an advantage here. I have an electric kit right next to my bed. Uh, ne right, right next to my keyboard. So I can. So it's also plugged into the MIDI interface box. And then I can just record in something like these drums. Where are they? Um, here they are. So if I solo these. It's always nice to put lots of compression on it. it. Makes it sound less flat and more like it's actually being played by a real kick because it's literally just coming in through MIDI and that's it. So then once you solo it with this, you can kind of see where where I got the idea of the drums. It fits in like the beat fits in with the start of the bass line kind of thing. And you see how it's already coming together just after those three things. And you could, but build a really simple song out of this, or a little riff, or a theme tune maybe, out of just these three things. So then what I kind of did 
is I kind of came up with a rough structure kind of idea. I also added in these bleeps, like these high bits over the top. So you get the idea? And I find it nice to start off with um, a kind of subtle start. It depends on, uh, again, what kind of track it is. Uh, one of my tracks called Heavy Steel starts off with a massive boom and goes straight into it. Most of the other tracks just start with like a casual pad, like this. I like the sweet pads because they change over time. Like it doesn't just sound like you're holding down one thing and they blend into each other nicely. Then you get a bit of the bass line, sounds nice. And again, it carries on and you get more bass line. So you always want to do these like kind of build-ups here. I'll, I'll walk you through the song now. Let's turn it down a bit. So then the bass line starts up. So you want to give it a little taster first. Give them a little taster. Then they're like, ooh, what's this sound like? And then it moves on to the actual thing. And again, you can see I did it here. And then they get a little taster of that too. Change it a bit. They're getting into it. Drop the pit pads out here, so you see, they've gone now. Now it sounds like it's building that. And this would be pretty boring if it went off like this. So that's why you put this little gap here and listen. And that sound here was um, an all a boomer, and you can get them from here up, up here. There's audio loops, and then you get instrument. Oh, wait, it's it's loading. I haven't actually used this yet on this exact computer. So see how it says drag apple loops here, just pop them down there and they go in. This is taking forever to load, uh, so I'm not going to bother. So you again, drop things out. See how it, that's been dropped out. These bits come over, I added a little bit, and then another little bit, another little bit, and then it came across. Drops out again. Changes, just change it completely. I try to mix, try and make every combination happen. And you can reverse sounds by, if you double click it and open up this, you can click reverse playback and that will just reverse it like I did there. And another little gap, but it doesn't have to be in all of it, see? So you see how that just made them stand out, it sounds quite cool. Now you just got the bass and the drums. The boomer after the breaks always makes a difference, it makes it sound like a real going like bang into it. Bit more bleeps up here, gap in the bass line, but then it comes back in. And again, and then back to the sweet pads. Nice little breakdown in the middle, I quite like that. Here, you're getting the build up of the new ref, something new. Like, ooh, something new. You want to go from big kind of changes, you want to give you want to give a little taster, leave a while, give a little taster, and the gaps get smaller, as you see I've done here. Another boomer, and it sounds like it's carrying on nicely. Oh, my computer's gone slow because I'm video recording too. It doesn't quite like this. Anyway, there you go. And then more bleeps up here. But you see, they don't have to always be constant. Leave nice gaps because then it's like. It's more noticeable because it's gone. It's like, oh, what was that? And it just goes back to normal. And then over the top again. See another gap coming up here? You'll hear the effect it gives. So it doesn't just sound like something else. But something comes in. Then you can hear the bass line coming in. And it's always up to you for ending the song. <coughs> My song endings are completely different depending on what kind of riffs they're like and what because some sometimes it's really nice the end is really nice or sometimes the beginning's really nice so depending on what it is and the bass line one of them I made the bass line drag out so it went do 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 at the end or you could do all sorts like this so here I give another break after this as you can see and it makes it sound like it's still going on and then dropping it out, I like fading it down, but fading it quite fast, on the nice pad so it lasts.
you get the pad and the boom and it just fades it out nicely. Sorry, I keep hitting this tambourine that's here. It might be quite annoying. Um, so yeah, that's how I basically make the songs, uh, make the tracks. I usually start with, like I said, um, some kind of line that I can stick to. I normally start with a synth because it gives you kind of a riff that you can play everything else to. So I start with this. So what you do, select. So if I open up this, you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to talk you through in a bit more words. Um, so you go, so it starts off here. And I want to start with synth, so you're using synthesizer and lead. Most most of the time is what you want. You go to lead, and then this one here is what I picked, which is a really nice one. I never found it before, and I just really like the sound of it, so that's what I went for. Um, start with that. Put down a clip record and just experiment a bit. So so just in case you come up with something and you're like and you can't play it again, you've got it recorded. So just clip record, mess about a bit. Try to try come up with some decent riffs. Remember the four or eight bar. That's why it's split up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So you get the idea. Um, that's why it's split up like that because it should be in four or eight bars. Um, I've used chip tune, classic techno. Oh, I've used loads of them. Uh, sync lead. Um, trying to remember. Uh, there's new sounds in this one because this is like the extra updated version because I used to run it on El Capitan, which was um obviously a few versions behind and it didn't have all the sounds and there's a few new ones in here now which I'm going to experiment in my next couple of tracks uh, which is always nice uh, and then once you've got that you want to come up with some kind of slightly different bass line it doesn't want it can, it wants to relate but it doesn't want to um, be the same because then you'll have no variation so you so mine's pretty the same which is not the best but um I'm not sure if you can hear the bass, I hope you can because otherwise, you know, I'll be just saying this. So that, all it does here is like you get an extra like, it goes, uh, where's the bass, here it is, um, let's go here, it goes do, 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 it lasts a bit longer, whereas this one goes do, 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 so it's a bit more like um, got more to it, and this is a bit more min min minimalist. Uh, and then once you got the bass, uh, you can you can do synth then drums, synth and bass. You can start with the drums if you want. You start with whatever. But I find getting a nice riff down. So that's what I do. Then I just do the bass. Then I put some drums down that will fit with because it's nice playing drum to bass if you're a bass player, uh, if you're a drummer, but if you're a bass player sometimes it's nice playing bass to drums so you might want to get the drums in first. Depending on how your mind works, it's all completely different for everyone else. And then you want to kind of work out what you kind of want. You might want some over the top synth bits, uh, another synth riff, it doesn't want to just be one thing all the way through. Make some variations, always nice. Um, the 8 to 16 bars for a riff is quite good because if it's just 4 bars then it's quite repetitive and quite boring. You want to make it Got a nice interesting riff. Uh, add some bleeps over the top so it's not the same all the way through. So all of this would have been the same, but um, I added in these extra bits which made it sound more interesting. Sorry, I hit that thing again. I'm gonna move that. Um, and you want to work out a rough structure. What you want to start with? You might want to start with the pads. You might want to start with the massive boom. You might want to just go into it. You might want to start with the bass line, the riff. Some little bleepy bits. The drums. That's an unusual one. I haven't done that yet. I might do that. Uh, you never know. Just start with what you feel like sounds best for your track. Um, and then you might, if you want to start with the kind of graduate one, you want the uh, like pads. They're, they're always nice. So you like them because um, if I go onto here and play, so it changes frequency slightly. Um, and a, a really cool tip in GarageBand, uh, if you go up here to the master kind of section, you can do this. You can like experiment like... Oh, no. I didn't want to actually play. So if you hear that... So you get all sorts of random sounds and it's really cool. Uh, experiment, experiment. Just all I can say is experiment because you, once you double click one of these with each, the, the bass has got something different when you go up here. It's got the, the EQ which you can uh, drag 
make make the lower end sound better, make the mids or the highs, depending on the frequency and all of that stuff. Um, and gaps is always nice because it, it instead of just having, I could have dragged these across like that and then just had them like that and then it, and then still had the boomer, but it doesn't make much of a difference. When you get a difference, it all goes silent. It's like <gasps> something's going to happen and then boom, it all goes in. Um, things like that and the reverse thing, like I said, I'll show you one more time. Pick the reverse. See, this one's ticked because it's backwards. This one's not. And if I just see, so uh, and then obviously this one goes. Wait, so it's building up here. Can't really have that on its own. Well, you can, but um, it definitely sounds better with the normal one after it. Um, and then don't forget the build-up parts. They're, they're the crucial things. Uh, and then add whatever. I've had ones with like five. No, this has got what? This has got seven. I've had ones with a few more tracks than these, like eight, nine, maybe even ten. So you can just put whatever you want on, really. Uh, and yeah, experiment. Uh, get the right gear, I reckon. I advise. I have a M Audio uh, MIDI Man uh, Anniversary Edition. Um, What's it called? Uh, MIDI interface, that's it. But you can get audio interfaces which basically have audio uh, half inch audio jacks in the back and you plug them into your bass amp just like you would um, as if you were connecting it to say like um, a sound system on stage. So you've still got your bass going into the bass amp and then out of the bass amp into the audio um, interface and then it will have a USB that can go into your computer. Uh, any detail on like actually the MIDI interface and all of that, I go watch separate videos on that. But this is a rough structure for GarageBand and how I make my music in GarageBand. And yeah, I very much encourage you to make your own music. It's really um, easy to do. And yeah, remember my links in the description, the listen now and the download. Please uh, support me by downloading a couple of tracks. It would be much appreciated. Um, and so click the subscribe button as well. And I'll probably come up with some more videos and some more useful tips to do with GarageBand. Also, I might maybe do a video on Affinity Photo because it is definitely my favourite graphics editing software for like making logos and all of that sort of stuff. It's this program here. And yeah, so uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Remember to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and be sure to click the notifications button so you don't miss a video. And yeah, I'll see you next Wednesday in the next video.